I want to tell you about cardinality estimation. OK, so here, here, here's the problem. Suppose you're Google, and you want to know how many different people are accessing your website on a particular day. So first idea is we're just going to have it so that whenever anyone, and let's just imagine Google has a single server for simplicity. So um, first idea, we're going to have a counter on our, on our single server. And every time we get a hit on our website, we're going to increment the counter by one. It's very easy to increment a number by one. And at the end of the day, we're going to look what the number was. And that's the number of hits we got on the website. Okay. But suppose we don't want to know uh, the number of hits. We want to know the number of unique users who hit us. So for instance, we might want to know the unique IPs. Every request comes with an IP. And we, we want to know how many different IPs there were that hit us. So one thing you might try to do is you'll say, like, OK, let's just store the set of all of the IPs that have hit Google today. And then at the end of the day, we'll just look at the length of this set. Now the problem with this, that, you know, obviously this will work perfectly, but it requires a lot of memory. So if you're going to have billions of different users, it's going to take you know, at least um, 4 gigabytes as the length of a billion IP addresses. And that might be more memory than you wanted to devote to this. So I want to talk about a strategy for estimating this. Imagine that instead of IP addresses, people were telling me uniform random numbers, as in numbers that are between 0 and 1 and have a uniform value between any of these. So one thing I could do is I could just store the smallest one I've seen so far. Now, suppose that I just store the smallest number I've seen so far. And then every time someone shows me a number, I just compare it to the number that I'm storing. And if it's smaller, I swap out which number I'm storing. Mm -hmm. And if it's the same size, I, or if it's not smaller, I just like keep my current min. And so if we just run through this, uh, imagine that I do this for some number of requests. And after a while, the number I end up is about you know, uh, 0 0.0001. So that's 1 in 10,000. A reasonable estimate is probably I've seen something like 10,000 entries. Mm -hmm. uh, or like probably 10,000 unique, uh, you know, unique people have, have been submitted, or 10,000 unique numbers have been submitted. Because uh, th th does that make sense? Just yeah, like, like that's to, what yeah for it to end up being the, that, sub, that small and yeah. that probability, OK. So here's a strategy. Take the IP addresses, and then apply a hash function, which as you maybe know, takes a, takes a value and maps it uniformly into a sequence of bits. And then count how many zeros there are at the beginning of that number. Uh, this is equivalent to the number of zeros in the binary representation of a uniform uh, between 0 and 1. There's like a 1 in 2 chance the first bit is a 1. There's a 1 in 4 chance that the first 1 is the second bit, and so on, 1 in 8, 1 in 16, and so on. Mm -hmm. So we could just store the number of zeros uh, in the smallest hash of a IP that we've seen so far. And so that strategy will let us approximately estimate the number of things we've seen so far. But of course, it's going to be a very noisy estimate, because we could have, by chance, gotten uh, a really weird small hash. So the next thing you can do if you want to do a better job than this is use 10 different hash functions. Whenever an IP comes in, hash it with these 10 different hash functions, uh, and then do the same thing for these 10 different hash functions. Just have 10 hashes. Okay. Yeah, have the min of the first hash, and the min of the second hash, and the min of the third hash. So if we just had one of these numbers that we're storing, then obviously we'd have to worry that it's quite wrong. Uh, you know, maybe by, by chance all the hashes happen to be kind of big or happen to be kind of small. Uh, so the next thing we can do is have these 10 different hash functions. And every time an IP comes in, we hash it 10 different ways and get these, these 10 different hashes, and then just store uh, the, the min uh, separately for each of the hash functions. So this algorithm is used all the time. Uh, it turns out that it's called hyperloglog log because if you want to estimate the number of unique elements given that there is n actual unique elements, you only need about the log of the log of n many bits of data to get within a particular error bound. So it's common, commonly used in databases and web servers and all kinds of places. In the last few days, a model called DeepSeek has come out, and a new model called DeepSeek R1, that are very interesting, right? And I think actually are really threatening the kind of monopoly that certain companies have on this system. And so let's talk about why that is and why we should be really excited.